Right, we're ready to go. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, it's Digital Creativity and Beyond. We call this session. It's the NSEAD primary session. I'm Greg Hodgson. I'll tell you a bit about me. But what we're going to try and do is cover uh, some digital skills for the art room um, with some practical ideas and suggestions. Um, so here we go. Um, I was an art teacher for a long time. I don't, um, unfortunately, I don't teach art currently. Maybe that's what I'll do in the next few years. Um, but for a long time, I taught uh, secondary art, um, got very interested in digital media. I'm going to try and share some of those pieces with you. Um, I then joined the school leadership and did that strange thing between teaching and school leading. Um, and then I started a company that does training for teachers. And here I am training teachers. And we tend to work with the US a lot. Um, but we're also very interested in digital communications and digital technologies. So I broke a curriculum curriculum down, a digital art curriculum into three spaces. Um, it's just one way of trying to make sense of a pathway through this, and that was digital imaging. Um, so things like Photoshop uh, and making um, illustrator graphics and collages. We're going to look at some of those and how we might do some of that. Um, making things move was kind of the progression once we'd sort of understood how to create digital images. Um, how do we then make them move? So that might be video or animation. Um, and then the kind of thing that sort of came out of this was that I needed somewhere else to end up. Um, and it was in interactivity. Uh, and that kind of led us towards games design, but it's not necessarily just games design. It's often very much interactive art. And of course, with the um, with AR and, uh, and, and VR, we've got lots of opportunities. Anyway, I'm going to quickly run through. Um, we often use Padlet. I'm going to show you a little bit about Padlet. So in all our training, certainly if I was in the classroom, I'd probably be using a Padlet as a fantastic way to start capturing uh, what my students are doing as they develop and progress. But I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes running through some of the some of the interesting projects that we've done over the years that sort of recur in different themes and patterns and ways. So um, something that I've often found works with young people really well is um, playing with ideas and kind of trying to turn things on their head a little bit. So this is a few years old, we're working with the Royal Shakespeare Company. And one of the things that we've tried to do was think about what does, uh, what would Shakespearean social media look like? So even the interface here is completely designed using, I think we use Photoshop for this one or Adobe Express or one of those tools where we're actually looking at putting text, color, shape, images, um, icons together, and then sort of com compositing it into a, a photograph. I think that's a free photo from a, a, a site like Pexels or a free site that we found and used that's royalty free to start trying to give students that knowledge of, well, this is what you are consuming this media all the time when you're looking at a phone, when you're looking at the internet, the internet, when you're looking at an iPad, and it is created, it's constructed and it's made. And so these projects are quite good. They're also really good fun. So imagining what the real Julia in this case um, would be uh, posting is of course um, what we've got in that picture there. Um, another version of this was just starting to think about what interfaces look like. And this is again at a secondary level, sort of thinking about graphical interfaces, but also just a story, starting to develop those ideas of story um, and using text uh, to sort of think about what might happen if we were Romeo uh, or Juliet uh, today. One of the projects I will try and dive into if I get time is to look at, um, a, it's called Project 5. Uh, it's not actually, it's just, I've got to take that off the slide. Um, it's called Inside My Head or or or, um, or, uh, or Me. I've called it Me, Myself and I, I call it all sorts of things. It's really getting young people to think about who they are and then answering some of the questions. Now, of course, you can do this at any age and I'll try and run through some, some more of it, but just thinking about you know, where I'm from. Um, what what and it's it's often about uh, representation as well like what, what what can i use in terms of sports in terms of hobbies in terms of food in terms of likes dislikes in order to start collaging and what we're really doing here is learning about composition we're learning about layers we're learning about color we're learning about basic design principles or art principles art and design pr principles at the same time as constructing meaning about us. And of course, the beauty of this project, which I always wait 
little while before I say to students is that it's actually personal and it's yours, you own it. But here are some rules. So we can't have no rules. We can, I mean, we don't have anything, but we introduce some rules like, um, let's just keep some of the colors. Let's not use all the colors. So we might introduce two or three colors. We might introduce uh, a way of rep repetition. We might repeat certain things. We might try and make it um, balanced. We might not. So anyway, lots of fun to be had with Inside My Head. Um, and just a shout out to Tom, um, who on one of the previous courses, online courses we've run, took a version of this, made it into a playing card system, which I thought was brilliant. So all about him uh, in playing cards. Um, other things that we might look at or work towards, and some of the projects that I'll show you in a second, are, are again, telling short stories using icons and actually making those icons. So very much about graphic design. Uh, similar project where we're actually looking at artworks, you know, pretty famous artworks, um, and then seeing how far we can reduce these to just shape and colour before we destroy all meaning. A really fantastic project. Again, um, playing with tools, learning digital skills, key skills, and that also allows us at the same time to really think about um, this idea of what we can do in terms of just shape and colour. Girl with a pearl earring, American Gothic. I think American Gothic is my is my favourite because it is so reduced. There's not really even much colour in them. Um, and of course, the screen has got these characters in the background. Um, so there's some di digital imaging ideas. I uh, said so we'd mention after that is movement. So here's a, what's called real time animation. Um, and this is uh, an Adobe tool. I've got quite a lot of Adobe tools because we use a lot of Adobe tools, um, Creative Cloud. Um, and this is called Character Animator. It's part of Creative Cloud, but there's a free version of this in Express, which I'm going to try and use. And you can see that it's making animation pretty easy. You take a character, you take a background, and then it uses the camera to do facial, rec uh, not recognition, facial tracking in order to make the animation happen. There's a good friend of ours. Bill Shakespeare, Romeo. And then we go on further and create actual animations and start telling stories with professional animation packages like Animate, um, or even getting students to start really taking control of video and using video to start telling stories. Super, superb for the art room. Um, this, is a, this is more of a graphic design in design publishing project where we're starting to get students to sort of tell us about something that they're perhaps learning in another part of their curriculum, um, creating uh, some kind of, you know, mock-up, etc. Uh, AR, you'll probably recognise the fact, and again, we don't have time in this short blast to actually look at how we do this. But this is a this is off my phone. This is this is fundamentally taking Guernica, breaking it into layers, stretching those layers out, and then travelling through those layers. I make it sound really easy. It is actually really really easy. But a great student project where we can get them to start focusing on uh, looking and looking at art and talking about art or questioning art. Um, where else are we going? We talked about Padlet a little bit and then one of my favourite projects of all time, um, which is uh, what we call digital anachronism. And there's just a few examples that came from a, a teacher training that we did recently or in the last 12 months or so, where we, we are basically colliding time and we're looking at old and new and seeing what could we end up with. The best one, of course, always, I think, is the um, ancient Egyptians, when we see ancient Egyptian art with their iPads, their sunglasses and their baseball caps. Uh, before I jump in and start, um, because I realise we've already done 10 minutes, I've got 20 to go. Also, just uh, portfolios. I have a quick chat about how we can gather work, not just through Padlet, but through other tools as well. So let's jump across. Um, I'll go, I'm going to I'm going to check that. I'm just going to check. Can, are you seeing Padlet now? Just wonder if you can put in the chat for me if Padlet is on the screen. I just want to check. I don't need to stop sharing and share again. Uh, yeah. No, I can't see Padlet. I don't think. Fine, I'm going to stop Padlet? sharing. No, no, it was there. Sorry, Greg. No. Oh, OK. I'm back. There we go. I didn't, wasn't sure if I had to stop or not. So just, just really to mention, let's just choose one. Um, uh i know we've got one well in fact uh any padlet let's let's go for uh i know that this was quite a good well attended event so just essentially i can share this with my community of teachers or students or classes or whoever and just by hitting that plus button in, in the bottom right 
I can add the work that I'm doing. And this is a, just a great way of collating work. And then it allows me at the end of the class to be able to talk about it. That's all, that's all I was gonna say. So let's go straight into Express. So a couple of things to note, this is Adobe Express was Adobe Creative Cloud Express. And before that it was Adobe Spark and then it's been various other things. It, it is now Adobe Express. I'm just gonna put the chat, the link in the chat because if you do go to Adobe Express, as a teacher or part of an education community, you get the premium version of this for free. So that's the first thing, don't pay for it. Um, what I want to do is quickly show you around that uh, I know I'm in Express because it says at the top, it means I've got this fantastic option. In fact, I just need to move the zoom bar across there. I've got this fantastic option to search for anything. Now that's the first thing to say. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let you figure that out when you get a chance. But down on the left, I've got some basic tools. I've got this plus button, which will allow me to kind of start. Now, if you're thinking, well, hang on, you haven't explained what this is. This is a multimedia, multimodal um, storytelling tool in my book. It's for digital storytelling. Everything I create in here is digital. Um, most of what I'll create is, is story based. But the view that you're getting, you can see that there's a lot of social media templates at the top. I'm not really going to worry too much about that because I'm also going to look at a little bit of AI options that are brand new and out of the box a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've got some text and I've got some image and we're talking a lot about AI at the moment. Now, this is a this is very much a K-12. So that's a US term for uh, primary, middle and secondary school um, safe zone. So uh, they've done a lot of thinking and planning around this. But also, as I scroll through Express, there's loads and loads of tools. Now, I'm just going to pull out a few and give you a couple of highlights that I think would be really useful and valuable in the art room. And I'm going to start by just thinking about getting a piece of uh, getting a, a, a poster together. So I want a poster that's going to tell everybody about this art exhibition that we're creating. And I just want to show you how easy that is, because to create any kind of graphical piece within Express, is basically a template that you can then reinvent. Now you can start from scratch. Students might want to start from scratch. I'm gonna show you how you would start from scratch in a minute. But the first thing I want to do is just show you how easy it would be to use a template. So let's say if I wanted to create a piece of social media or a video or a photo, I could click on any of these multiple places to start. Um, but I'm just gonna start with a document. And the document that I want is a flyer, okay? Now the great thing, start from a template. So let's browse templates. It's showing me my um, canvas in the middle of the screen and it's showing some different tools. Now I'm just gonna go down and grab some colors. I like the big flea market here. It's nice and pink and bold, looks pretty good. As soon as I start clicking on different elements of this, you can see that they're boxed and I can start changing them. So the big flea market isn't gonna work for us because we're not doing a flea market. So I'm just gonna highlight that and I'm just gonna put my art show. OK, I'm going to stick like that art show. Um, it's not the big flea market. I'm just going to delete the whole thing here by clicking anywhere. He says it's that easy. Click anywhere and then delete. I'm going to get rid of a few of these. So I could put the address in, but I can actually change this up. Um, and I'm just going to put Mr. H's classroom. Kind of like that, it's not really big enough or in the right place, so I'm just going to drop it over here. If I do want to change things, as soon as I click on it, you can see on the left hand side, I start to get all my different options. So with this one, I'm just going to go kind of bigger and you can see that my text starts to grow or smaller or I can start to change the font that I want to use because I've got a specific font that one doesn't fit in at all. Um, so I can start to kind of shift things around. So simple as that, um, free entry with this flyer that fits in like, quite nicely. It doesn't have any art in it. So let's add, uh, let's add a picture. Let's shift these things. I'm going to shift this over here. If I want to click more than one thing, I can just hold down shift or I can create groups. So I'm just going to shift these around a little bit to just make a bit of space. And then I'm going to add a picture. And then there it is. It's done. Of course, you could spend a lot, lot more time on that. You can see that we started to introduce layers on the right hand side. So that shows me that what's going on. So if, for example, I put my show in front of that asterisk, if I put the asterisk back in front because it's both black. Let's change the color. Let's just make it something really awful so we can see it. There you go. So I can start to move. 
great little concepts, digital media concepts to start understanding before you move into higher level tools further down the line. Not that you need to. Let's just add an image. Let's add an image quickly and then we can shift on. So up here, I'm working in an image because it knows that I'm background. I'm just going to say thank you. I'm going to move back from that. And that's my main page. So now I want to add some media because I know that within media, I've got photos, videos and audio. And I'm going to choose uh, just because I think a picture of a dog would be good. I don't know why we're going to have a dog. I just want to show you this. I think it'd be great to have a picture of a dog on here for no reason whatsoever. I should really have a painting or something, but anyway, I'm just going to have my dog. Now, the problem I've got here is that I've got this usual thing that I have with digital media is that the background is getting in the way. I don't really want the background. So to take it into a digital media editor and cut it out is quite hard unless I start using AI. And this is where I just need a click. Now, previously, uh, I would have had to go into Photoshop. I'd have to cut this out, remove the background. Now, all I want to do is click remove background. So let's see if it works. Because I don't want that big yellow. I just want the dog. And if I stretch that out, you can see that that is actually really, really good. So you've got these corners that allow me to shift things around. I might put him in there. And that might just be a bit funny and get people's ideas of, hey, this is good. I can add multiple pages. So let's just say I wanted to duplicate this in some way because I now want to create, oh, that is the second page. Sorry, that's my mistake. Um, let's just say we wanted to actually add another page to this. We could, we could then even go and resize this because suddenly we realize we don't want a flyer. We actually want to make this for Facebook. So let's make it into a Facebook post and resize it. It gives me exact sizes of all social media. And then I can just go in and do a few tweaks and think, all right, well, look, it's nearly there. Let's shift him over, etc. All right, there you go. That's a bit of graphic design, a bit of publishing, a bit of social media. That's the first thing. It automatically saves. So I'm just going to give it a name because the date isn't really helpful. And I'm just going to call that Art Show. That is now saved. It's in my folder. It's ready to use. I can share that. I can download it. I can do whatever I need to do. Let's go back right to the beginning by hitting that A, do something a little bit more interesting. So one of the things I talked about was creating uh, anything with AI. Now, let's say we took that project inside my head. One of the things we ask people there is to start th talking about likes and dislikes. A great way to start with students is food. So I'm just going to put in here some, uh, uh, what am I going to put in? Some, uh, some pasta ice cream. Right, I have no idea what this is going to look like, but I know that if I was going to try and make an image out of pasta, which I love, and ice cream, which I love, I have no idea what's going to come up. It quite take quite a while. I'm going to do this in AI, and this is a this is a piece of technology um, that's brand new, and so we're taking a bit of a risk to see what we get here. Pasta ice cream uh, photo. I'm going to put in here as my text prompt. You can see um, other prompts. If you if you hover over, you'll see oh, oil painting of this. Let's go pasta pasta ice cream oil painting might be interesting. And just hit go. Now, what this is doing is generating through that algorithm, pulling from all kinds of sources across the web, and it's creating pasta ice cream. They go past. It's exactly what I asked. It's given me a few different options. I actually quite like this. I think that's really horrible. That's part of my uh, surrealist program that I'm working on. This idea of cold ice cream versus hot pasta. So I'm going to probably stick with that one. But let's have a quick look at the others that it's come up with. Yeah, not so good. More of an oil painting, though. Also quite nice. I can load more and then I can start getting into details here by adding whether we want this as a graphic, whether we want it as art, whether we want it as a digital art or with a palette knife. I'm just going to keep that. I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to use that as my starting point. So I really like that. I think this is this is ideal inside my head. The first two things. Then if I wanted to start to add and collage into this, I'm going to just switch that off. I'm now going to find a photo. Now I could upload. I'd always ask my students to upload their own photos, but I'm just going to add, upload a picture of a. Uh, Let's just go for rugby, just because the Rugby World Cup is on at the moment, and I seem to be watching far too much rugby. So let's just say we're going to have an image of rugby that we're going to include in this. 
let's bring this guy in. I've never played rugby, so I don't really know, but there you go, there's a rugby. Again, it's got this box on it. Let's remove the rugby, uh, the box from the background. It's done a pretty good job, but I just want to sort of show you how we might offer some ideas about repetition. But also the other things that we might want to do, we've got all kinds of effects that we can add. We can explore all the different color systems. We, we could do pretty much anything with this. I kind of like that one, although I think this might go better with this sort of the yellows and the darks that we've got. And then when we start to look in here, we can just duplicate these um, by right clicking and then offering up some of these ideas. So duplicate. So I talked about duplicating before. I'm going to make him slightly bigger. Let's duplicate again, make it slightly bigger. And of course, they're in the wrong order now. So I just wanted to do this by dragging the really big one to the bottom and then going down like that. So we could start to do all kinds of things like that. We can even go in and start to adjust. We can blur slightly. So we start to play with depth of field, for example, or at least what looks like depth of field. I think that was in here, a little bit less. And there we go. So we can start to build our collages. Now I'm going to shoot on. Um, again, let's save it. Let's remember, let's call this, uh, let's call it ice cream. What do we call it? Pasta ice cream. Um, ice cream. But again, that's the idea of developing collage uh, that's about me. We have, I'm looking at the media, which has got photos. There are some really nice design assets as well that I can bring in. So, you know, if I wanted to bring certain images in, pop art images, etc., I can do that. I haven't got time to look at those. I'm going to go back to that A uh, and I'm going to jump across now to one that I love, which is called Audio for Animate. No, it's not. It's called Animate for Audio. So I'm just going to click on that. And I was experimenting with this earlier uh, and I think I brought in my own picture. But let me just show you how this works. So this is this idea of real time animation. There's a record button down here. I've got a character. I chose Riley the dog. I thought that was quite good, but let's just change it to Zippy or Dakota or Charger or Blair or Artie. We'll go for Artie because we're doing arty things. So let's have Artie. Um, you can't create your own characters at the moment. Um, you can change the size of the character and the character is going to get recorded. They're going to use my voice to record the character. Uh, so we'll do that in just a second. Let's just have a look at the character. Then there's the background. Now I could choose any of these backgrounds so I could have this. But what I actually want Artie to do is talk a little bit about a piece of artwork. So let's upload an image that I've got earlier. And I think I found Paolo Uccello's Battle of uh, San Romano. The great thing about this painting is that it was an introduction, very early Renaissance piece. Uh, that includes all kinds of great things, particularly his hat. I haven't got time to talk about that. Um, but it's the beginnings of trying to figure out um, those layers of perspective. Little people in the background, great big people in the foreground. Massive great helmet in the same line as a tiny little soldier. So it's not all perfect, Paolo, but we're doing a bit good. But I'm just going to record, you know, I can record two minutes max. I'm going to do this really, really quickly and just show you what happens. So I'll hit record. Hi, I'm going to tell you all about the Battle of San Romano by Paolo Uccello. First of all, let's have a look at perspective. I'm not going to go on. You get the idea. We could get our students talking about their work, talking about other work. And what's happening now, and this might take a few minutes, so I'll see how I go. Otherwise, I'll cancel it, is that um, it is going off into because everything is on the browser. So we're not downloading any software. We're working on Chromebooks, iPads. We're working on desktops, Chrome, on, on a browser, essentially. So this is going to go off and create a short video. Now, if it's going to take too long, because it's only just done, I oh know it jumped up to 60% there. It's jumped up to 80%. We'll hang in there while it just gives me the video. Got five minutes to go. I've covered about three things. Here we go. So there's the video. Let's just have a quick look at this. It's uploading the media. I can download the video and that will give me a video file. But what I can do in here, is see that the mouth and the arms are now moving. And if I hit play. Hi, I'm going to tell you all about the Battle of San Romano by Paolo Uccello. First of all, let's have a look at perspective. One of the lovely things about this uh, is that, you know, it, it, it's, it's me, 
but it's not me. And I think teachers can use that in all kinds of fantastic ways. I could open it up again, I can download it, etc. But we've got one last thing that we're going to look at. Um, and that's just how, again, we can make a video and there are no questions in the chat. So that's good. So I shall keep going. Uh, let's let's not make a video. Uh, well, let me quickly tell you how you might make a video. So let's hit that plus button. In fact, let's just go to videos on the screen here. If I wanted to make a video, we need to decide what size. So let's just go normal kind of video. We could add a video here. If I wanted to upload a picture, so let's just say, in fact, I've got a picture, so upload a picture. Let's just go to the Battle of San Romano. Uh, in fact, I've got an AI picture here we made earlier, which is, which was like, what's what would she look like with fruit on her head and if she was smiling more? So we kind of played around with that. So let's just put that in and just click and stop. There we go. So there's my, I'm going to talk about this piece of work. Um, if I want to add audio, I've got a couple of choices here. Number one, I can add a, an audio track, which is nice, very, very loud. But actually what I'm more interested in is actually recording. So I'm gonna hit the record button and start recording. This is an AI piece that I've been working on about the Mona Lisa. Let's just put it in the right place. And you can see down here in this video editor, I've got my main piece of, which is actually not a video, it's, a, it's just a still image. I've got an audio track and a voiceover. If I play that, uh, I've got a video. Again, I can download that as an MP4, I can share. This is an AI piece that I've been working on about, etc. Last thing, because I've got three minutes to go, is to show you this, just because I think this is fun. I don't really know what I'd use this for, but I think it's a great way of starting to get students to think about text and typography and graphics and fonts and actually just having a bit of fun. And it's it's another AI tool. I've only, by the way, I've shown you like 2% of what's in here. So it's just a good place to start. And that's the text effect. So if I go into the text effect, and the one that I always try and play around, I say always, we've only had this for a little while, is I wonder what an eggs and bacon, and I'm also a bit hungry, so eggs and bacon feature, an eggs and bacon font might look like. Well, here it is. Here's your opportunity to create any font you can. So I think just a lot of fun to be had. Um, you can see here, look, white padded down jacket fonts, vintage tapestry flower fonts, gold glitter fonts, etc. I'm going for an eggs and bacon font. And this is going to basically create, through the magic of AI, uh, a font system that I can now start using, which actually looks hideous. So let's just try and choose another one. Whoa, that's weird as craziness. So there we go. We could even load more and start to look. There's one. Look at that A. And of course, if I actually now want to go and type this up, I could go N S E A D. Make it a little bit smaller um, because it's huge. So let's just grow. Well, let's just now. Sorry, I'm not doing this very well. Ah, there we go. So let's just. So there's my NSEAD eggs and bacon font. Lots of fun to be had uh, playing around with these. The very last thing just to mention this, and I'm just going to jump across to one I've already made, is that if I hit plus, I can also go and find uh, a web page option. I'm not going to be able to show you how to make one, but let me just show you what that might look like. Um, because here's a portfolio, secondary school portfolio, but very easy. I add text, I add images, I add videos by clicking one button, a video button, a text button, an images button. That's it. This is as simple as this. And I can start to add all my work, all my student work in a portfolio. And then at the top, there's a publish button and we're published. So there's a really lovely way of creating web pages. And that's Adobe Express. Uh, let me quickly jump back, finish off. We talked pretty much about everything. Um, we did all of those things that I mentioned. Just to mention to you, we have a more in-depth set of PD coming up called Digital Art Will Save Us. Um, 
I have put the link in to the chat if anybody wants to get that, contact us. It's just going to take you through some of those things that we've just looked at today a bit further. Um, but hopefully that's helpful. And that was Greg Hodgson, art teacher of yonder year um, and now an art teacher teacher um, of this year. Hopefully, I think that's my time up. So good luck with that. And hopefully you could get stuck into Adobe Express.